if you want to earn more, you need to learn more. Now, this library gives me the opportunity to tap into the knowledge of those exceptional people. Are we living in the most affluent times ever? It is the fact that financial illiteracy still exists. You have sufficient assets that pay you a passive income that exceed your expenses. Don't live your life on other people's terms. People don't pay you for your time, they pay you for the value that you add in that time. Hi, Bodev. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us on The Exceptional. Um, I know you're very busy, so thanks for investing some of your time with us, answering some of our questions, giving advice to our audience, and helping them to grow their business and become exceptional. Francho, thanks for the opportunity. It's great to meet up with you again, and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing some of my insight with you guys. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Vota, a um, bit about your background. You were very successful uh, executive in, in the corporate world and so on and then you decided to, to start your own business. Why this transition from corporate life to starting your own life? Yeah, I think Francois, I mean, uh, I, I, I always joke and I say that I'm a serial entrepreneur. It's almost like a serial killer just in a better way. Yeah. Um, and I, I always had this idea that I would one day run my own business. Um, I had the opportunity in my corporate career to run business units and business divisions, so as if it were my own. Uh, but I realized that corporate has its own dynamic and, um, and that I'm not really a corporate animal. Uh, my transition was, was kind of a personal choice I had to make. Um, I'm a bit of a workaholic, so I spent um, uh, too much time at work and I, and I really neglected my family. And I, and I got to that intervention perspective where I said, you know what, if I work for myself, the chances are I can manage it better. It's a bit of a misnomer because it's not always true that as an entrepreneur, you spend more time. But certainly I could manage my priorities better. But I but also knew that I had this um, urge in me and I, and I have a passion for people and I could much probably live it out better in an entrepreneurial environment. And that's, that's really why I started. You know, that's amazing. I think, I think most people that transition from corporate to entrepreneur get to that crossroad where they have to say, listen, you know, I need to make that choice. And, uh, and it's great. I always say as an entrepreneur, you don't work much less hours, but you can decide when you work and as you say, how to prioritize it. Absolutely. But you, you are a phenomenal uh, writer and author. You wrote uh, three uh, best-selling Amazon books, the one being the, uh, the uh, now I can't remember, the, the Ordinary Millionaire. Um, will driving a poor change your life and also seven simple principles to double your income. Which one of these were did you enjoy the most writing? Um, I think the first one, uh, would driving a poor change your life. So um, I always joke and say that I went through a very early midlife crisis. My, my wife's, ha wife's happy now, but at the time she wasn't that happy. I went and uh, bought myself this fancy uh, sports car. Yeah. Um, I suppose to a degree it was because I thought it would change who I am and, and it didn't. Uh, so that's ultimately the lesson. But once I bought the car, I could actually write about it. And, and would driving a Porsche really is a reflection of, most probably as an entrepreneur, you've got some goals. And, and you would just fill in the blanks where would driving a Porsche change your life? You would say, would owning a million rand company change your life? So... So the idea behind the book was really quite simple. It was to kind of give a simple methodology for individuals to set goals, personal and business, because I realized I grew up in the free state and I never got taught these principles as to how do I set goals in my business? How do I follow it through? Um, how do I actually change my life if I'm not happy with the spot that I'm in right now? Um, but it was also a book that it took, it took me 10 years to write now. I actually have a copy here somewhere. I think I, I didn't give it away. So here's the copy of the book. As you can see, it's a, a pocket-sized book. And uh, once again, because as a free starter, I grew up with, um, uh, with Afrikaans as my first language. English was only used in self-defense. And um, I, I had to write the book with a dictionary next to me because I didn't know that many English words. But it's close to my heart because it really speaks to the difference I want to make in South Africa in a, 
and hopefully around the world. The book has now been in its fourth edition and there's about 25,000 of them in circulation around the world. Yeah. If someone wants it, they can download it on, uh, on my website and I think you're going to most probably give the details away later. Yeah, I just want to ask where can one find it, but I will give uh, all your information uh, later. I see that your library is there at the back. Um, yeah. you, you read almost a book a day. Why is it so important for you to explore more every day, to learn more every day, and not just you, for, for anyone that owns a business or personal? Yeah, I mean, I think front row, at the core of it, I've got a mantra in my business, and it simply says the following is, if you want to earn more, you need to learn more. So one of the best opportunities to learn once you've done a degree and the likes is books. Um, uh, yeah, this is a small collection of my books. I must probably have about 5,000 um, hard copy books and, uh, and multiples of thousands in, in my uh, Kindle library. Um, it just, it's this awesome privilege of for a couple of hundred bucks, I can actually uh, be mentored by Warren Buffett. And um, I know that you've had interactions like myself with Robert Kiyosaki and um, Richard Branson, uh, Steve Jobs, the greatest Elon Musk, the greatest entrepreneurial minds of our times. And um, we can converse with them and, and just get an insight into their thinking. And that's why I believe that you should never stop learning. And learning is exponential. The more you do of that, the better you become at it. And just think about it. I mean, if I had to ask you, um, now you run a um, primary or a crash. Um, so if I had to ask your audience right now, from a business perspective, if you're an entrepreneur, at what level are you? Are you still in crash? Because you don't jump from crash to university. Mm. You've got to go through crash to primary school, secondary school, then university. But at a business perspective, where are you? To progress through those levels, we all know we have to learn more to go through the different grades that we wanted to do and eventually end up if you wanted to do a university degree. Our business is exactly the same. Now, this library gives me the opportunity to tap into the knowledge of those exceptional people and apply it to my business. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I think everyone can, can take that uh, as a lesson um, to, to just expand them, them, their minds more. And as you say, being in the presence of those great entrepreneurs, sometimes meeting them is, is hard, but through their books, we can actually get into their minds and, and learn so much more. Yeah, I, wanna... I mean, think about it, the average book will cost you 200 or 250 bucks some of the best investments that you'll ever make. Yeah, true. But I want to talk a bit more about your, your company, a two that you, that you, or that you founded. When did you found it? It was a couple of years, almost what? Yeah, it's about six years ago. Six so years. I, two, I left discovery, um, in 2009 as a, at a corporate, I bought a small business in town and we ran that for a couple of years. And then in end of 2011, I started that too. Um, yeah. And it was with this vision of really assisting individuals out there with their financial uh, independence. I know that you've got this huge goal of giving or impacting 100,000 families, I think by 2020, to give them world-class financial products. Why this yes. goal? And why should every entrepreneur and business owner have a goal that they, that they work towards? Uh, I've, I've been privileged to work with some of the greatest entrepreneurs in the world. Um, South Africans, Adrian Gore being one of them. He was one of my personal mentors when I worked at the Discovery Group. And um, when he started his business, he had a very definite core purpose for his business. Now, um, irrespective of what you think of the company, he had this very clear vision. And I, every single business that I look at worldwide that's successful have these visions. Now. Um, from this perspective, if you think as individuals, our eyesight is most probably one of the most important um, uh, usage that we've got in terms of being able to see things. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if you had no eyesight. So Helen Keller famously said is that um, disability is not being blind. Disability is having sight but no vision. Mm -hmm. So uh, my vision, I crafted it in that way because I wanted to be a definite number and I wanted to give a definite date because you and I know that's the way you need to do it. Yeah. And I wanted to put it in a positive present tense that's motivating people out there. 
And I don't just want to do it with financial products. Um, core to this journey is education. Uh, the Ordinary Millionaire, the book that we wrote, we also um, uh, put together a 14-day financial freedom fast start plan where people can engage. And if they just go to the Ordinary Millionaire, .co.za, they'll be in this journey and they'll get the book for free um, on, on the take. But it's educating the masses out there because if you think about it, this is a worldwide statistic, is that 97% um, of people will never ever be financially independent. Now, we're living in the most affluent times ever. I mean, we the richest people out there. If you think, just think about us. The chances are that we... Um, right now, have got more wealth than what our parents had at our age. Um, as the generation, generations moved on, but we never improved our education. We still don't teach kids at school about financial principles um, in the 21st century. Yeah. Uh, at Robert Kiyosaki's, um, he was here last year when he launched his um, 20th uh, anniversary edition of Rich Dad Poor Dad. He made a statement that was really profound. He said the following. He said that the biggest atrocity of the 21st century is the fact that financial illiteracy still exists. Now, here's the catch. He wasn't talking about America. He was actually talking, or rather South Africa, he was talking about America, mm. which is the number one economy in the world. So that's my passion. I don't want to just give products to people. Um, I want to empower them to know how those products are used mm. because by and in itself, products won't get you to become financially independent. Education will financial education world and that's my passion you talk about financial being financially independent is there a difference between having a lot of money and being financially independent yeah yeah absolutely um so i i have a lot of clients that are in in worldly terms exceptionally wealthy so they've got hundreds of millions um so take them out of the equation then i've got clients that earn two three four million a year so that's a lot of money in most people's um, terms but if they earn a million they spend a million and one and if they earn two million they spend two million and one um, and you will never become financially independent that way so financial independence is not per se a number and that's the difference between having lots of money if you have lots of money and you keep a lot of it um, you will eventually become financially independent if you have lots of money and you spend all of it um, I mean that's a recipe for disaster mm. and most people are on this um, fast track to nowhere. They might earn enough income, but they spend all of it. They don't invest. We don't have this investment mentality or mindset. We've got this um, uh, user, user mentality. So, so we consumers, we consume finance. Financial independence on the other hand is a simple notion that you have sufficient assets that pay you a passive income that exceed your expenses. So practical example, you have a uh, rental house that you rent out and your net income from that rental house is 10,000 rand a month. And your total expenses is 9,900 rand. Then you're financially independent. Okay. So I don't know a lot of people that can come out with 10,000 bucks, yeah. but if that were your case, you'll be financially independent. It's irrelevant of the number. Um, you just need to work out what's your number. And part of the course that we take people through, we teach them to understand what their numbers are. So financial independence will differ from my perspective to yours in terms of the number, but it's a very simple equation. It's enough passive income, meaning you don't actively work for it, that generates that income for you that will exceed your expenses or liabilities. You answered my following question. I actually want to ask, is there a formula to become financially independent? But I think your answer is say that enough passive income uh, you have to have enough assets that gives you enough passive income that exceeds your expenses. And that really is the formula of becoming financially independent. Maybe just to add on to that, I mean, right now, most entrepreneurs and most people that I know, their biggest asset to generate an income is you. Me. Yeah. So I'm the asset. Yeah. Now, the problem is, um, as I get older, and unfortunately, um, once you start hitting the age of 50, you start realizing, hmm, I don't have as much energy. I don't really want to deal with um, all of these issues anymore. So that's a depreciating asset in terms of its energy value. Hmm. But a house, if you've got it there and it's in a safe neighborhood and it's well protected, that asset ain't going to depreciate. It's going to appreciate, not just in equity value, but also in income value. Yeah. So 
we make this mistake by misusing the one asset that should get you jump started and focus on my, and that's where the learning comes from. People don't pay you for your time. They pay you for the value you deliver in the time. Yes. And, and if you want to earn more, just become more valuable. Create uh, solutions for bigger problems. And that's the Elon Musk. If you think about the problems he's trying to resolve in terms of sustainable energy, um, I mean, uh, creating a different um, colony on Mars. I mean, mm. what the heck? I don't know yes. if you and I ever would have thought about something like that. But now within that, he's, he's, um, he's creating solutions for major problems. Uh, imagine if you can live on Mars, how much better can we be sustainable on Earth? Because we know it's habitable and we can actually do it. And that's the challenge that you and I have. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Uh, Vota, you at two is six years old, six, seven years old, and you started it, it and with one advisor. Um, and now you've built up this huge machine, I think of 240, 250 some advisors. Um, what is the, what does entrepreneurs, business owners need to do to grow their business in today's market economy? I know it's, everyone says, oh, the economy is so tough and, and so on. So what do we need to do to grow our businesses? Yeah, so, so interesting when I left the corporate environment in 2009, if you remember what happened in that stage, it was the second largest recession that, um, that we had. So from my perspective, um, recession is just an excuse outside of ourselves. It's almost like if I had to ask you, um, were you involved in the ANC election? And if you weren't, you and I didn't have any say in terms of who the new ANC president was, but we worried about it. So I have a belief, um, the 90-10 principle, um, I think Stephen Covey coined the, the, it initially where they said that 90% of what happens with us and in our life and business, we can control. 10% we can't control. It just depends how much energy are you spending on the 10% that you can't control. So my view is quite simple. Get yourself the best team. If you want to have a world-class business, get world-class people to work with you. Okay. Make them partners. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean equity partners, mm. but just give them a partnership model where they feel value because great people build great businesses. Secondly, have a very definite vision. Say to yourself in terms of where do I want to be three years, five years from now. And then that three to five year vision plan, you need to break down. And I think this is the lessons that you teach your, your um, uh, business owners that you coach is that you need to break it down up to a level where you have a 90-day rolling plan, but that 90-day rolling plan needs to be executed on a daily basis. I see people miss these things because they don't really understand what do I need to do today to get to my end goal. If you have no end goal, you're not going to get there. Gotcha. I think the third critical thing that you need to understand in, in building a, a great business is that um, you are either good at two things. One, sales and marketing or two in the operational finance, HR kind of thing. If as a startup entrepreneur, most of us do all of it at the same time. Um, but the chances are you are great at one of those, not both. I've yet meet, to meet someone that's really great at sales and marketing and operations, HR and finances and these kind of things. Understand which of these you're great at and then find yourself someone that compliments you. Because most entrepreneurs fail, not because they have poor ideas, it's poor execution of those ideas and people need to execute. And I think the last one is systems. The greatest businesses in the world operate on systems. I'll use McDonald's as an example. Mm. And I know this broadcast is going um, it's probably wider than just South Africa. So um, I'll be a little bit careful as to what I say. But yeah, I, I can say this one thing. McDonald's never, never advertise that they have the best burgers in the world. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Yes. What we do there, they have a phenomenal system. And they've just duplicated that system around the world. So it's a little bit of what we did is we created a bit of a system and we've managed to duplicate it in a very short space of time. Um, it's get tough because the more people that you have, the more personalities, um, the more issues you have to deal with as a business owner. And if you don't have systems that can cater for those, you'll find, you'll find yourself wanted. So those are some of the critical components. And ultimately, I suppose, uh, which is quite critical, understand your strengths. Um, understand, really understand what you create at. Because when I talk to people and I say to them, listen, what are you great at? As South Africans, we're actually not good at 
um, blowing our own trumpets because we think it's an ego trip. Yeah. Americans, I think, are quite good at that. Um, and we can learn something from them is that if you're good at something, if you don't tell people that, if you don't show them, they won't know it and they won't do business with you. Now, I think um, I read some, somewhere on social media the other day, I say, if you're not willing to promote yourself, who else will then be willing to promote you if you're not willing to do it? But, uh, it's a fine line. I mean, so you've got to be careful about the line that you cross, but, but yeah, you definitely have to do that. No, of course, of course. But uh, that's some great advice um, that, that you've just given us. One other thing that I want to talk about is, is branding. Atu is a, is a great brand in South Africa. It's, it's widely known. What is branding to you and why is it so important for the success of your business? I think brand, um, so I, have a, I have a different philosophy, I suppose, to general corporate business out there. Um, I mean, the corporates have a lot of money to spend on brand recognition and brand awareness. Uh, right at the onset, I decided I wasn't going to spend money on, on just building the brand per se. And, and, and I'll tell you why. Uh, if you really think about it, people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. They don't do business with businesses in very few instances, unless you're a B2B type of scenario. But remember, there's still an individual involved. So, so my philosophy was first start with your brand. So what we did in our business, we a business with financial planners, is we literally went and built the brand for each of these guys. Their own branded websites, not in a two's name. Our sticker is there somewhere, um, but it's branded in their name. So if you're a financial advisor with us, it will be frontrowyoubear.co.za because people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. Those individuals, if they, if they run their business well, they will become your brand voice. Um, if you interact with someone and you've got a great experience, the associated brand that goes with it will be built at the same time. And that's been my philosophy. So, um, so yeah, and I mean, it's, it's been six years down the line. We have now representation right across South Africa. Um, the name, Atu, is quite unique. Um, and it comes from uh, my early days as a, as a free state boyki in uh, Filiunskruen. In actual fact, I was in Vigilbron at the time, 13 years old. And I used to play soccer with my local friends. And when they scored a goal, they would shout, Atu! And then it was a celebration of, of soccer goals. For me, the brand represents, we want to help clients celebrate financial goals. Um, and that's where our, our tagline, Goals Achieves, come from. Um, so that's, that's the passion we want to live out. Uh, that's great. It's a great story to, about, uh, behind the name as well. And I think it resonates so, so good with, with your audience and, and with, your, with your clients. Bodo, what is, what is success to you? Everyone has their own definition of success. I want to find out what is, what is your definition of success? I'll give you my early version of success. Um, and when I talk to kids nowadays, one of those resonate with them is I thought I needed lots of money. I needed to be wealthy. Um, and it came from where I was born in a small town in the free state. My mom was a hairdresser, didn't know much about finances. Second, I definitely was quite weird from an early age because I wanted to ride this Porsche. I thought I didn't want a tractor, I wanted this Porsche. And I thought that a Porsche would make me successful. I wanted to be a merchant banker, and I thought that that would give me success. And I achieved all of that. I wanted to have an MBA. So um, I thought that was success. Um, I, at the start of my change from corporate to my own business, realized that, um, that true success or true wealth can't be measured in things or money or acquisitions or great house or even I had this dream that the Free State Cheetahs would win the Curry Cup. And that would be... Um, so they did win the Curry Cup, and I've got a um, replica jersey that was signed by Franco and his team. Um, but even that doesn't really measure success. Uh, my measurement of success today is that I truly live my passion, um, that I impact people, and the first of those people must be my family. Um, that I need to make a difference in their lives. When I was in the corporate environment, I almost, I almost lost my most precious asset, which is my family. Family and friends that you care for, and ultimately being able to make a difference. But that, that difference is, in my domain, living out my passion in terms of financial um, independence and creating 
entrepreneurs in South Africa that's successful. And, um, and that for me is that if I ultimately live that optimally, that's what success is for me. Yeah, I know that you're a, a great family man and a, and a true, true testament to that. Uh, Vota, when you wake up in the morning, what is the first three things that you do? Everyone needs a routine. What's your routine in the morning to set your day up? Uh, so I wake up, I go wake up the kids. We get up quite early because our kids travel quite far to school and um, we have breakfast together. And um, then I normally go drop my kids off and... Um, and when I do that, I come to, to work. I start, I do some of my reading in the morning. So I've got like a power hour that I just spend on myself. I do some webinars. I listen to um, motivational tapes and uh, nowadays audios. And I do some reading and I do some planning for the day ahead. Um, and that's basically the way that I, would, uh, that I would start a typical normal day. What is, what is your... Go. What projects are you currently working on? I know you're not a person that just sits and, and, and work on one thing. You've got a lot of, lot of projects. What's your, what's your projects that you're working on currently? Yeah, so uh, the one, one big project is The Woody Millionaire. Um, we created an academy where individuals can participate in terms of uh, mentorship and learning on a financial wellness perspective. So that's we, the, the website's up and running, but we're rebranding it and we we're doing a complete rehash of that. We want to get it out to schools. Um, so the second project that we've got is we worked on some with partners of ours, some national partners, to build a um, platform that um, kids and adults can invest in online. And um, for as little as five bucks, you can have a, a full portfolio invested. We will be launching that later in the month. And then we we busy building our business. So we we're developing our brand across South Africa in terms of acquiring new financial planners to come on board, quality financial planners, on this vision of ours to impact 100,000 families with a world-class financial plan and supporting products. So, so those are some of them. We've got multiple projects on the go. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a bit restless, so I can't um, keep that much. I'm busy writing three books uh, almost at the same time, so I'm, I'm definitely not... Uh, uh, focused in terms of that perspective, but I just have so many ideas that I that I want to share with individuals. Yeah, so those are some of the projects I'm busy with. Sure, well, that's uh, that's amazing, and uh, and uh, I wouldn't expect anything less from you being busy and having your uh, irons in so many different different things and, and impacting and uh, so many uh, different people uh, with the knowledge uh, that you have. But the way where did you acquire this knowledge? Or oh, the people that you look up to who are your mentors, your idols, your heroes that you look up to and that you learn from? Yeah, so I suppose, I mean, given my slant to entrepreneurship, the, the Robert Kiyosaki's and the Richard Branson's and the Elon Musk's and the um, Bill Gates's of the world certainly was inspirational to me. Um, in South Africa, we have some phenomenal business leaders. I had the privilege to work with Adrian Gore, who's the CEO and founder of the Discovery Group. Um, and just get some first-hand experience as to how do you become an innovative monster that they are and are impacting people around the world. And they're coming up with some interesting uh, new product lines in the late in the year, one of which is a bank. Um, the rest of the banks must watch out. So, so those are the kind of people that, I, that I've learned from. But, but I've always had this um, uh, stance that I could learn from the cleaner as much as I could learn from the CEO. And for me, that was quite important is that um, every single individual that you interact with, you can learn one of two things, how to do things and how not to do things. But you never walk away from anyone without having the ability to learn from them. So, so that's always been my objective. And then, um, as we said earlier, I do a heck of a lot of reading. Um, there's not a day that goes by that I don't read a book or a uh, um, magazine that's relevant to to the industry and I and I try and expand that beyond just financial services because you get intrigued and you get um, ideas from people that that are outside of our industry and not just not just in, in the specific domain that we play in. Yeah, that's true. But a few uh, a few questions, uh, fast five questions. Um, what are they? Uh, what is your favourite sport? Uh, I suppose right now mountain biking. My son is a keen mountain biker, so I. 
enjoy going out on a ride with him. So mountain biking would be it. You will pay one million dollars to have lunch with Warren Buffett. Tie or no tie? No tie, definitely. <laughs> so you said I like your tie. No, I like your tie. <laughs> <laughs> um, your favorite car? Uh, a Porsche, obviously. Porsche. Yeah. Yes. And uh, what is your favorite quote? Yeah, so I suppose my favorite quote is from Steve Jobs that, um, that says, don't live your life on other people's terms. I mean, it's um, the whole context of uh, you need to live your life on your own terms. Yeah. Bote, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thanks for investing in this with us. One final question. Uh, what message would you like to leave our listeners and our viewers to take their life from ordinary to extraordinary to exceptional? I think it's quite simple. It's firstly, you need to understand what your passions are and start living them. And you can start small. Um, if you decide today to start running the comrades, you're not going to run a marathon today. You start with that first kilometer. Um, and I mean, ultimately, you need to start somewhere. But the best place is to start with your passions. Secondly, understand your strengths. Get people, outsource your weaknesses. I have this absolute belief that you don't work on your weaknesses, you just outsource them. Get someone that's great at that um, and get cracking with that. Thirdly, education is not a guarantee for success. I know people that are well-educated and that are miserable. You need to focus on self-development. Education will give you a job. Self-development will give you a career and and create exceptionality. Um, and that's where you need to focus on. So my parting thoughts with you, with you will be, if you want to earn more, understand the notion that you need to learn more. People don't pay you for your time. They pay you for the value that you add in that time. And you the determinant factor. Bote, thank you very much. Thanks for those wise words. Uh, it was a privilege and an honor to have you on the exceptional. Thank you again for your time. We are going to make a, a big difference with this. And with your knowledge that we're going to send out to entrepreneurs, to business owners, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Francho. That one of us is mine and uh, best of luck with uh, the exceptional. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.